What's up, everybody? Welcome to SLC Puck! I know you're thinking, what the heck happened to SLC Puck Studios? Was there a fire in Austin's mom's basement? Was there a, Did something go wrong in the basement apartment that Austin lives in? Is, is that why we're seeing him in a, in a hotel room in Southern California? Uh, no, neither of those things happened. I just happened to be out of town uh, for the weekend. But still wanted to give you guys SLC Puck on a Sunday. I know you guys count on it. I know it means a lot to everybody. It's kind of like going to church. It's just that important for people on Sunday. If, if, if they don't get SLC Puck every Sunday, something just kind of feels off, right? So here we are. I'm your host, Austin Facer, coming to you from a very nice $99 a night hotel in Southern California. I'm going to see the Los Angeles Chargers play the Cincinnati Bengals tomorrow. So... That is why I'm here Saturday night recording an episode of SLC Puck from unfamiliar territory, but still happy to be with you You guys. If you're just listening to this on Apple or Spotify, you probably can't really tell the difference too much. Other than the fact, I think the sound quality in here is probably pretty bad, but you know, we go on, we do, we do the best we can. Uh, If you, if you like the show, you want to watch the show, you want to listen to the show, you can find me Apple, Spotify, YouTube, KSL.com, all that good stuff. You want to support the show? Follow me on Instagram, Twitter at SLC Puck. I've got merch at SLCPuck.shop. Hats like so, lots of good stuff. So go ahead and check it out. But uh, we'll we'll get going. I mean, it was sort of a, a fun weekend of, of hockey, especially on Friday. That was that was a ton of fun. Um, a lot of things happening in the arena on Friday, as as we thought would happen last time we spoke on Wednesday. I mean, man. The excitement was through the roof. People were standing out in the middle of Third West just about trying to get a hockey jersey at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's kind of an interesting trend. I think that's that's a lot of fun. And look what I happen to have right here with me. It's These are my pajamas for the night, guys. I'm going to wear this uh, Utah Hockey Club official jersey from Fanatics to bed tonight. Really excited. I'll talk more about that jersey in just a second. But... Friday, again, so many fun, interesting things happening, uh, not the least of which being a hockey game against the Vegas Golden Knights, which ended up being a disappointing night for the Utah Hockey Club, a 4-2 defeat to Vegas. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But obviously, another big story was Archie the dog making his debut, service dog, team dog, uh, was there to greet people on the, on the concourse. I asked you guys on Twitter to, to show me your hockey dogs, and I always love seeing hockey dogs and and dogs that you know, I just, it just I, there's nothing warms my heart like 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 getting some dog pics sent to me. So you're always welcome to send those to me on Twitter. But Friday's game, uh, kind of an interesting one. I think um, I think we saw a little bit of a, a hangover effect, uh, which is interesting because they were playing the team that the hangover was filmed in, right? The 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 Vegas team. But you know, I think it was it was interesting to see how this team played after the the big high the, what I would say was their best win of the year against Carolina on Wednesday that, that was utterly thrilling um, you know obviously the the story there four to one win over over the Carolina Hurricanes Karel Vamelka has 49 saves sees 50 shots blocks all but one chance of veggie 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 these aren't just people who want lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers these are people chanting Vamelka's nickname he had the game of a lifetime. It was crazy fun to watch on TV. I can't imagine being in the building. I'm sure that was out of control. And obviously, it was you know it was funny to the morning skate. Um, they announced uh, the the day of the, the Golden Knights game. They announced that Vimelka would be getting the start against the the Golden Knights. And someone asked uh, Coach Turney. They said, "What what's what was the decision behind going with uh, Vimelka?" And he goes, "Well, did you see the game on Wednesday? <laughs> you know, obvious choice." Easiest decision anyone's ever made, and Vimelka played pretty well. You know, he had he, you know, obviously in the lot, losing effort, still had 25 saves, saw the puck pretty well. But I think it was sort of an interesting game because I my my prediction after the the Carolina game, I was like, this could be like a really confidence building game for the Utah Hockey Club. This is something they can build on. We'll see if they can can pick up another win against Vegas and get some momentum going through the rest of November, which is a very tough schedule. They're on the road quite a bit. And maybe this will get them in a great position to be in a playoff spot come Thanksgiving time, right? I mean, my good friend Trent at Clean Hits Hockey loves to say, the better position you are by Thanksgiving, 
you know, that's a pretty good indicator where you'll be at the end of the year. I, again, I butcher that stat. Trent says it way better than I do. So go ahead and check the clean hits guys out for a more eloquent version of that, of that uh, statistic. But, you know, again, I, I think you, you saw that early in the game. If you watch the game against uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, Utah had the best period that they've had all year. The first period was unreal. I believe they had 16 shots on goal, which is a high for any period in the game or of the season. Really tremendous effort. They were they were really bringing it to Vegas early on. It, and they jumped out to a 2-0 lead. And there was a lot of great movement, a lot of shot first mentality, which is something we've been dying to see from this team, you know, for for a couple weeks now. Uh, really nice one-timer by Logan Cooley found the back of the net. And then another uh, sick, twisted wrister by Mikhail Sergachev to, to get Utah up 2-0 in the second. And so fun to see Mikhail Sergachev showing emotion. He's, he's been kind of a very stoic guy all year in, in talking with the media. And, you know, even a lot of times on the ice, we don't see him showing a ton of emotion. The guy got hit in the side of the head with a frickin' puck and, like, you know, just kind of shrugged it off, right? That's just the kind of guy he is. But, you know, he, he drains that shot, you know, fires an absolute laser you know, top right corner on Aiden Hill against Vegas shows a lot of emotion, much like the same, a similar goal he had against Carolina. Really fun to see this, this guy, as I said in a previous episode, has been my MVP uh, of the early goings for the Utah hockey club. So really great to see him see, you know, show some emotion there. Uh, I think the team responds to that really well, but unfortunately, you know, they went up against a team that has championship experience in the Vegas golden Knights and, Guys like Jack Eichel, guys like Mark Stone, they don't like getting pushed around, especially by some some dorks up in Utah. You know, I, that's how I imagine a lot of people in Vegas see us. You know, which might be true, but you know, I think you saw Vegas, you know, respond in a big way. They, you know, they they got two goals back, and then scored two goals again in the final ninety seconds to to take a four four two lead, and ultimately win the game. Two goals by Thomas Hurdle, two goals by Wild Bill William Carlson. And it was really interesting to hear Mikhail Sergachev talk after the game because, uh, you know, I, again, he, he's a leader in the, in the clubhouse. He has a commanding presence in the locker room. He's won a couple of Stanley Cups uh, with Tampa Bay, obviously. And, and I think he, he has a pretty good beat on what, what happens when, when winning happens and when losing happens. And he says, listen, the, what happened here tonight, fellas, people in the media, is that uh, you know we just stopped being assertive at a certain point, and I think if you watch the game, you could you would totally agree with that. I think you know both teams went into their locker rooms after the first period. Vegas had a probably had a conversation like, all right, what do we we do, we're we're Stanley Cup winners. We won the cup just a few years ago. This we're, this, we're not having this. And they came they came out of the gates in the second period, and and put the heat on Utah real quick. Punch back really hard. And I think this is like a really good learning moment for Utah, who is still a very young team. A lot of guys who have not entered their prime yet. A lot of guys who haven't played in big games yet. And they didn't respond to the response, I think, the way that you would, you would like them to. And again, Mik Sergachev's comments were, we just, we weren't effective. They, we let them take control of the puck when it should have been us, you know, putting our foot on the gas. You know, my, my, uh, my coach in high school used to always say, you know, hey, if you got your foot on the jugular, you know what you do, guys? You dig in the heel. You, 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 no mercy. It would have been great to see Utah take, a, you know, a 3-0 lead, a 4-0 lead. Didn't happen. You know, guys like Jack Eichel, they don't like that. He's, I mean, he was very creative on the ice. He put uh, Thomas Hurdle in great position. And then, you know, Wild Bill, Billiam Carl, or Billiam. Well, that, that should be, that way, that's kind of cooler, right? Why don't they, Willi, all this William stuff, why don't we just go straight to Billiam, you know? That would be better. But, I mean, he's a Stanley Cup winner, too. He's been at the Golden Knights since their inception, so he, he knows how to win. And, you know, I think you just show, you saw a veteran team, you know, really, you know, not put up with some, 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 some crap in their mind from, from a younger team. And that was the story of the game. So, you know, I, I think that was a really good learning moment for me, I, for, for me watching this team and for the team themselves. You know, this the Utah Hockey Club is still coming into their own. They've, they've got to learn how to win. They've got to learn how to respond in different situations. And I, I think that's that's exactly what you can take away from this, this Vegas game. The other thing you can take away from the Vegas game is that people really like these jerseys. You know, they, they went for sale Friday morning. I think they opened the, the doors to the team store at the Delta Center at 7 or 8 a.m. 
for season ticket holders. I heard that people were lining up outside the Delta Center at 4 a.m. It was about 30 degrees, maybe less. And it, the, I, I drove past the arena a couple times on Friday, you know, hoping to see the line die down at, at points. From what I drove past at like noon, at like 2.30, line was still absolutely bonkers. I, I managed to get a jersey from from some folks who were at the game on Friday. So definitely really appreciate that. And as you can see, it's it's blank on the back, you know, and the, the ones that came out, you know, already pressed with with player names and, and all that were were flying off the shelves. Um, so w- obviously my plan is to, to, to take this back to the arena uh, and get, you know, a, a name and number on it. What number, what name and number will I get? Ooh, that remains to be seen. I think I'm going to go with number nine. But I don't know if I'm going to get Keller on the nameplate. I might get uh, Facer, which is my last name. Or maybe I'll do SLC Puck on the back. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? But, or maybe I'll do Keller. I don't know. That, that kind of seems like a cop-out. You know, th- you got to kind of really have some swag to walk around with, you know, your name on the back of a, a professional hockey jersey, you know. Or you maybe, you know, I'll just do it. That's just what – yeah, who cares, right? I'll just do it, right? Why not? But, you know, th- these jerseys are really great. And I, I think for the price point, I mean, the two, not to say $200, any, is, it's hard to make anything at $200 a good deal. I'm not willing to say it's a good deal. You know, $200 is a lot of money. But I feel really good about the quality of this jersey. That was something I talked about early on in the uh, early days of SLC Puck. You know, we were talking about what the initial look might look like. And obviously, when, it, you know, when we knew that Fanatics was going to be making these jerseys, I was like a little skeptical because they just had a big ordeal with Major League Baseball. Those uniforms turned out horrible this last year. I don't know what the whole story is on that, but I was like a little concerned. I'm like, all right, I, I hope these jerseys don't come out. I hope they're not like chintzy, made out of tissue paper and glued together with Elmer's glue. I, from what I could tell, like just looking at my jersey, it's 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 really, really nice. I feel really good about the quality. The, the holographic logo, NHL, Shield. On the collar, looks great. I, the collar is nice and tight. It's, it's a different material here around the neckline. I think it, it's, it, it's really nice. Um, the shoulder patches, which are a team store exclusive at the Delta Center, you can only get these team uh, these shoulder patches if you buy your jersey at the team store. Uh, mine seem like they've been put on pretty well. I, I, I have heard from some people that some of them weren't put on very well. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But, again, just going back to my jersey, the one I have in my hands, you know, the, the name across the front, you know, in, in the stair-stepping letters, Utah. I feel really happy about it. The The material feels nice. It's, it's nice and light and easy to wear. You know, I actually wore this on the plane from Salt Lake City to, to LAX the, today, and, you know, it, it felt pretty good. It was, it was a pretty comfortable wear. Um, it's some other really cool details here. They definitely did some things that, like, real hardcore hockey fans would appreciate, and I think most notably – is the the fight strap uh, in the back, um, which I think is a nice detail. Obviously, if you don't know what a fight strap is, these are on legitimate like professional level hockey jerseys. You have if if you're playing in the NHL, you have to attach your jersey to your pants like so with a with a fight strap, you know, and that's to prevent the jersey from getting pulled up and over your head, right? If you don't have your fight strap on and you get in a fight, you can actually get kicked out of the game. And so, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's something that a fan wouldn't need, you know, none of us are wearing hockey pants when we, you know, go to the Delta center to, to cheer on the Utah hockey club, but it's just, it's a nice detail. It makes you feel like these are like legit. It's, it's to add something like that is something that real hardcore hockey fans appreciate. I know. I think it's really cool. I think it's a nice detail. Like whenever I see people wearing like old school Utah Grizzlies jerseys or just, you know, NHL jerseys of any kind. Like if if they're nice, they look like they're sewn on. Like I always ask, like, does that have a, does that have the fight strap on it? Because that's just kind of like an indicator. Let's you know, like it it takes it to another level. And so I think to have these is 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 a really nice, really cool touch. Um, but you know, just just talking again, you know, some people have said that they, they have noticed some issues with uh, their shoulder patches, with uh, the the lettering on the front, the name and number on the back for for some folks. You know, I, I had a friend who went and got a jersey, and he said he had the, the shield on the front and on the collar was all messed up. And the, the team store handled it really well And I, from what he told me. And I think they're handling it the right way. You know, my friend just took the jersey up to the front, and he's like, hey, I want to buy a jersey, but, you know, this is messed up. You know, and I think he was just kind of expecting them to give him, like, 
I don't know, 10 bucks off, like a little discount. They ripped it from his hand. They said, no, 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 you can't buy that. No, don't worry, we'll, let's, we'll get you a new one. Ran in the back, grabbed in a new one, same size, said, here you go, dude. We'll, we'll throw the, the Dylan Gunther name and number on that on the back for you. You know, we'll get you exactly what you want. We'll take care of you. And I think that's important to note, right? Yeah, these were made at a very frantic rate. You know, they, they come, I'm sure they come virtually blank from Fanatics or wherever. And yeah, they're heat pressing names and numbers on, you know, well, pretty quickly at the arena. I'm sure there's like guys taking shifts, getting through all these custom orders, you know, because the demand was crazy. I mean, you saw the videos of people waiting in line. The team store was bonkers during the game before the game on Friday. And by the way, kudos to you guys who, who went out and bought the real deal stuff. I, I, I think that's great. Not to throw shade on people who, who go with uh, the knockoffs, but I, I, I personally like getting the real stuff. And I think it's cool when you see people act, do that themselves. It means there's like a real investment in the team. You know what I mean? But again, like I think it's important for people to realize. And, and if, if you're one of those persons out there who bought one of these jerseys and maybe it's not up to the quality you expected... I would say just take it back to the team store and they'll they'll fix it for you because what they really don't want to happen is they don't want people posting pictures of a shoddily put together jersey and saying, "Oh my gosh, this can you believe the crap, the qual- the crappy quality that, you, uh, that they do? Just go get it fixed. They'll fix it for you, no sweat. They don't want you posting this. This is like that would be their nightmare situation. It would be MLB fiasco 2.0. Just go get it fixed. They'll do it for you. I guarantee it. They they don't want you complaining and 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 griping on social media about it. And so I I, I I'm interested in seeing what the process of, of getting the the name and number put on the back. I, I, it's it doesn't get heat pressed like directly onto the jersey. By the way, is from what I can tell because I, I had a friend get his uh, name and number you know put on the back. They put it on a nameplate. The name like it looks really legit. It looks professional. The spacing on the letters is is pretty solid. I it's something I would be happy with, and uh, so I, I'm looking forward to taking this back to to Delta Center to get Facer Nine on the back or, or SLC Puck Nine. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But if if you got a jersey, or if you didn't, and you're looking forward to attending the Utah Hockey Club's next game, you're in for a good one. Let me tell you that because you are going to see one of the sport's all time greats take the ice. In the Delta Center, they're playing the Capitals at home. Is that correct? Just checking my checking my production assistant. I know they're they're playing the Capitals next. I believe they are at home, and wh- who they're going to see is a guy on a mission. He's a Russian on a mission, and I'm not talking about Putin. I'm talking about Alexander Ovechkin. And the 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 cool story with Ovechkin, right? If if you're new to hockey. You may have heard that name. It might sound a little familiar. If again, a lot of this podcast is sort of geared towards people who are very new to hockey. So if you find this remedial or you know rudimentary or you know repetitive, excuse me. I'm just trying to get people up to speed. All right, just give me cut me some slack here. Give me a break. Uh, but Ale- I mean, Ovechkin is the guy who, within the next year, uh, is going to be the NHL's all-time leader in goals scored. And it's kind of, it, he's had a really cool start to the season. He's he's an old man. I believe he's pushing 40 now. He's been in the NHL for 20 years. And now to start the year, he was trailing Wayne Gretzky's goal record by 41 goals. So Gretzky holds the current record. And Gretzky holds like 60 records, right? So the, to, to, there's no overstating who Wayne Gretzky is in the annals of hockey history. He's he's the great one. It's a title he's earned. It's a title he deserves, right? But Ovechkin has ent- entered the season trailing Gretzky by 41 goals. And last year was kind of where you saw like a big dip in production. Could be due to age, could be due to a number of factors. Only scored 31 goals last year. And so to start the year, I remember saying this to people. I'm like, you know, I don't really, I don't think he's going to get the record this year. I, I think he's going to need to come back for another year, which is a lot to ask out of a guy who's already, you know, you know been in the NHL for 40 years. But he's been off to a red heart, hot start to start the season, and the Capitals have been playing very well too. They've got Ovechkin and a really nice core group of prospects. If you if you subscribe to the Hockey News, which I recommend you do, because I have an article in the Hockey News coming out pretty soon. I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, I work really hard on it, as as I work hard on on a lot of things, and I just have fun too. I lo- I love doing that kind of stuff. 
But again, you know, Ovechkin and the Capitals have been off to a pretty good start to start the year. Ovechkin himself personally, you know, he's got 10 goals in his first 15 games, which puts him on pace to break the record this season. It's going to be around March, April, assuming injuries don't happen. You know, I mean, knock on wood, knock on headboard, you know, that we don't see Ovechkin suffer a Kobe Bryant or or Aaron Rodgers style injury and, you know, really set him back in his pursuit of a, what is an insanely incredible accomplishment. Yeah, I, 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 just looking at an ESPN article, it says here at, at his current pace, which might be a little unsustainable, he might just be pretty hot right now. I think he's shooting well above his uh, typical average. But, it, but hey, you know, let, let's say he does keep the current pace, just for the, just for the heck of it. He'll, he'll break the record on March 5th. Uh, if he just goes at his regular career goals per game pace, he'll, he'll break the record March 10th. And, it, you know, if, if, his, if he continues to slow down the way he has the last three seasons, we're, we're looking at something around April 10th. But still, I, you got to give it to Ovechkin. Scoring 40 goals, 41 goals is an incredible accomplishment, and doing it at 40 is, is pretty insane. Um, you know, I, he plays a style that I think is very similar to what we see Dylan Gunther playing a lot of. It's a lot of just being ready for a one-timer at the face-off dot. Um, that's where he's made his bread and butter, you know, his entire career. But uh, Ovechkin is, is one of those guys. And uh, I remember when he won the Stanley Cup with uh, with Washington, I believe it was t- uh, 2019. It was such like a, it was such a great. It was a moment that like, you know, I watch. I remember watching that. and I was like, man, I this that I wish something like that had happened for John Stockton and Carl Malone because you know. Ovechkin, you know, was not a young pup when he won his first Stanley Cup. I did not mean to rhyme, but, you know, hey, say la vie. And so that was that was a really cool moment. I know, like, a lot of the hockey world was was rooting for him. Actually, I think it was 2017 because, yeah, they played the the Golden Knights um, in uh, the Golden Knights. Yeah, it was Golden Knights first season. I think it was the 2017-2018 season. Feel free to fact check me on, on that. I'm just going off the top of the dome there. But Ovechkin's a guy, I mean, if, if you get the chance to see, you might not get very many chances to see him play an NHL regular season game in Salt Lake City at the Delta Center. I think there's a real possibility if he breaks the goal record this season, you'll just you'll see him retire and head on back to Russia and, and just uh, just chill for the rest of his life. Um, so this, this is really your opportunity to, to see – uh, a guy who is going to go down in history as one of the all-time greats in in the sport, and so if you have the means, if you're able to, if you if you're interested in 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 seeing you know some big names, I mean, there's there's always a few guys to to see. You know, when the Oilers are in town, uh, it's Connor McDavid. When when the Toronto Maple Leafs are are here in Salt Lake City, well, not here because I'm not in Salt Lake City, but when they're in Salt Lake City, you know, you want to see Austin Matthews. It's going to be amazing to see Pittsburgh and and Sidney Crosby here. They're, he's kind of in the same ilk as as Alex Ovechkin, but seeing Ovechkin in person in Salt Lake City is is going to be a real treat. It would be so special to see him score a goal in what could be a really memorable year. And not to say that I like seeing opponents of the Utah Hockey Club score goals, but if you were to if you if you did want to see one happen at the Delta Center this year, it's it's this one. It's 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 Alex Ovechkin. So. Again, this is prob- this very well could be your only chance to see him play a regular season game in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. So get to the Delta Center. Uh, that game is going to be on on Monday. So we'll have we'll have a post game show for you on Monday. Uh, I'm excited to bring that to you. Thanks for thanks for thanks for uh, coming with me on the road, by the way. I, I lugging uh, the, some of this equipment around is, is is tough, but I think we've got a, a nice little mobile unit here, so we can keep the show going, keep the keep the fun rolling, even when we're away from uh, from swanky SLC Puck Studios. Uh, not going to be a frequent occurrence, though. But it, it is nice to know that we we can do this now uh, when when we need to. So, really appreciate you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever the heck you find this, uh, KSL.com. And don't forget, if you want to get some merch, like this cool hat I'm wearing, slcpuck.shop, and we'll see you soon. Oh, and and, and, and yes, let me continue to tease this. I am going to have uh, a big guest on in, in a couple weeks. That's not a joke. I will have a very big guest on. So really looking forward to that and uh, excited to, to share more with you about what, what's happening in SLC Puck world. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Have fun.